talking to our Mike Yanni, who's mm -hmm. at Chef Bar this morning making some Halloween treats. I heard something about s'mores. And the apocalypse. Mm. Sounds like a good apocalypse, Mike. It does sound good. S'more apocalypse. I like it. And of course, I found a gadget in the kitchen. Take a look at this. This is called a Searsall. Uh, Chef Sean Zonnie, uh introduced this to me. I'm the gadget guy. I like technology in the kitchen. He said, have I got the gadget for you? And we're making dessert with this gadget. Well, us chefs equally love gadgets. <laughs> and this is one for the home chef. It's called the Searsall. You can find it online. And really what it does is it replaces a salamander in the kitchen. If you use a torch, you're going to burn things. This diffuses a flame and gives us a lovely heat source that becomes super hot. If you want to add a little more browning to the heat, if you want to toast something, it's a perfect touch. These days, a lot of people are playing at home with sous vide cooking, yep. cooking in the circulators. This is a great way to add a little color and a little caramelization after. Awesome. But any application we're going to do today, a very good friend of mine came to me and said, you know, I love s'mores. And I've got a great idea for Who's you. Who likes s'mores? Who doesn't like s'mores? And you know what? For Halloween, it's all about what kids like. So this is something we're going to do on Saturday night here. Okay. But I also think it's something that anybody can do at home. Now, I've tri tricked it up a little bit, obviously. But you can get yourself anything that's oven proof. You can put chocolate, peanut butter, layer it in the bottom of it. You can put fruit, nuts, whatever you want on it, marshmallows. Throw it in there, let it bake. I guarantee it's coming out ooey gooey good. No okay, well, so we got the pan here. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're doing it a little bit differently. I've made a ganache, which is essentially cream and chocolate. I've added some peanut butter to it, and we're gonna put a whole bunch in the bottom of the dish. Nice. I'm now gonna layer it with a bunch of fruit. Just because with it being so sweet, well, my mom would say she wants a little something <laughs> healthy in there, right? So using raspberries, you can probably use strawberries you, if you want. You or... can use whatever. I like raspberries because I find raspberries a little bit acidic. I would probably use a raspberry, a blackberry, something like that adds okay. a little bit of tartness to it. We then, the fun, the simple part. The almighty but, marshmallows. You know, we've been making our own marshmallows here at Chef Bar actually quite a bit lately. Um, marshmallows are the simplest thing in the world to make. You just take sugar, you bring it up to temperature, up to about 240 degrees, yeah. and then you put it into a mixer and you let it whip. That's and, it. And as it whips, it turns into these lovely, lovely little... Okay, well, now, is it time for the Searsall? Now it's time for the Searsall. So fire that up, keep it up above, and let's see how your toasting marshmallow okay. skill is. Let's see if how this guy burns it around the fire. Well, you'll start to see, let, it, let the flame come in, and you go down a little bit closer than that. Closer? Sounds like a hot air balloon. A little bit closer, or is that yeah, pretty good? Go a little bit closer. Oh, look at that. You can start to see it puff up. And when you do it in the oven, you can turn your top broiler on. It works the same way. Really let your marshmallows kind of come down. There we go. Well, I'm going to finish toasting this, and I'm going to throw it back to Leah and Jill in the studio. But you know what? Chef, I can tell they're jealous. Oh, yeah. Targeted marshmallow roasting. I love it. Yes.